It's the end of the day with Ray. Hello, my friends. It's time for part four. Ladies and gentlemen, I got it right here on the board. Lexmark Consumable Business Unit. Band? Question mark. When you look at the band entities that are on the list, one of them ties to Lexmark's consumable business. So I have to ask Lexmark, are the customers here in the United States that have MFPs and, and Lexmark you know, printers, are they going to run out of toner? Because you can't bring the toner into the United States. You can't bring it into the supply chain because it's banned. It's part of the UFLPA list. Is that true? This is why it's so important that Lexmark actually get out there and do a real press conference. They've sent out a couple responses. I've done some episodes on them. Those responses were for the sales team and for the dealers to figure out how to sell around all the nonsense going on with Lexmark. <laughs> Don't stop selling. You've got quotas out there. Go tell the customer this. Tell them we got an independent board that's covered by itself. We're, nice is only one of our suppliers. I already did those episodes. But ladies and gentlemen, I did see where there was a copy and pasted response from Lexmark put on one of the industry's blogs. I'm reading this thing. At the end of it, it says they wanted to congratulate Lexmark for their great communication on the effort. I'm thinking to myself, this guy's hat's on way too tight. Because, ladies and gentlemen, there's been no public response from Lexmark whatsoever. And now there's customers out there wondering if they're going to run out of toner. Think about these big national and major accounts. Think about the government accounts. They're thinking to themselves, are we going to get toner? Obviously, we can't put toner in the machine if the toner's being manufactured by a company who's on a list as part of the UFLPA. This would be terrible. Ladies and gentlemen, before I get into today's episode, I do have to bring something up. A while back, I got an email from Bob Goldberg. We know that Bob Goldberg is a lawyer for the BTA. Business Technology Association. And Bob said, hey, Ray, we got some people saying that uh, our logo for the BTA is on your website. And we, you need to take it off because we're not a corporate sponsor of the end of the day with Ray. And we want to make sure that we're neutral with all of the industry's media. I say that because I do see Andy, industry analysts, logo on their website. Anyway, that deal I had with Brett Hoskins, who's the director of the BTA, was, hey, you put your webs, my logo on your website, I'll put your logo on my website, I'll do some marketing for you. Remember, I was doing all the videos when they had the BTA meetings, literally thousands of people were watching that stuff, really promoting the BTA. It was kind of a trade, quick pro quo, if you will. But anyway, Bob said, you know, people are complaining, our, our logo's on your website, take it off. So now I have to think to myself, the people in the BTA were more upset about my logo being associated with the BTA than a band company. We got Nine Star that's on the BTA's website as a sponsor. A PRC company that's been banned by the Homeland Security Department is a sponsor of the BTA. By the way, I did click on that logo and it gives me this. Attackers might be trying to steal your information from www.ninestarimage.com. Ladies and gentlemen, you know what I don't see on the BTA's website as a sponsor? Lexmark. So i got to ask the question. Did Lexmark call up the BTA and said, look, since Nine Star owns us, even though they tell the whole world that they're just an investor, for the purposes of saving money, maybe they told the BTA, hey, Nine Star owns us, so could we just put their logo on there? That would cover Pantom, that would cover G&G, &G, and that would cover Lexmark. Could we save some money? I'm just asking the question. But more importantly, I just find it so bizarre that the BTA was more concerned about being associated with the end of the day with Ray than being associated with a company that's on the ban list by the Department of Homeland Security. I hope I don't see any Pantom display set up at a BTA meeting. I hope I don't see any G&G &G printer display set up at a BTA meeting because both of those organizations are on the list. Both of those subsidiaries are on the list. Quite honestly, ladies and gentlemen, I believe it's death by association. I believe anybody associated with Nine Star should be scrutinized like crazy, whether it's Lexmark, whether it's Pantom, whether it's G&G, &G, whether it's Static Control, whether it's Apex, all of them. I don't care where the stuff's made. The excuse, we're going to get it out of Mexico. It doesn't qualify. Oh, the name's spelt wrong on this band company. That's not the one they're talking about. It's this company. I believe Nine Star is the biggest shell game company in the world. So ladies and gentlemen, let's jump into today's episode. There's the list of the band entities. Let me just read them real quick to you. Nine Star Corporation, it's eight Zuhao based subsidiaries, which includes Zuhao Nine Star Information Technology Company Limited, Zuhao Pantom Electronics Company Limited, Zuhao Apex Microelectronics Company Limited, Jihe Semiconductor Company Limited, Zuhao PU Tech Industrial Company Limited, Zuhao G&G &G Digital Technology Company Limited, Zuhao Seeing Printing Technology Company Limited, and Zuhao Nine Star Management Company Limited. Holy crap. Ladies and gentlemen, Nine Star has all these subsidiaries. It's just absurd. They're a $3.7 billion company. $2.7 billion of that revenue comes from Lexmark. 
What is the purpose of all this? Does anybody ever ask that question? I want to share this really quick because I want to try to put to bed this nonsense that Lexmark keeps telling people that Nine Star is just an investor and we have this independent governance and they're just an investor. They're just one of our suppliers. This is Fitch. We all know Finch, right? They, they're the people that rate people, right? They're the credit rating people. They rate people's ESG governance. Well, they give Lexmark a four. Let me just read this and, and so you can get on the same page with my thinking, okay? ESG governance. Lexmark has an environmental, social, and governance ESG relevance score of four for governance structure because while the board of directors is independent, ownership is connected among Nine Star PAG and Legend Capital and is relevant to the rating in conjunction with other factors. Lexmark has an ESG relevant score of four for group structure due to the complexity of the group structure and the presence of materially related party transactions with Nine Star and is relevant to the rating in conjunction with other factors. That sounds a little bit confusing. But at the end of the day, ladies and gentlemen, they're saying the ownership is concentrated among Nine Star, PAG, and Legend Capital. It's irrelevant about this independent board. The independent board might be able to decide when to cut the grass in Lexington and when to paint the building or maybe change the sign out front. But other than that, it's all going through Nine Star. I want to share this really quick. At the end of the, of the consolidated financial statement for the end of 2021, they had 30 subsidiaries. If you look at their annual report for 2022, they show 13. So we have all these subsidiaries, but we rifled it down to these 13. Now, folks, this is the most confusing company on the planet. And they purposely do this. And I think they do this so if they ever get banned by the Department of Homeland Security, people can decide which company is doing the right thing and which company is doing the wrong thing. At the end of the day, I believe that all these subsidiaries, whether they're on the end on the consolidated financial for the end of 2021 or whether they're in the end of the report, all these subsidiaries are death by association. That's what I believe. Night Star owns you. I took the list of the banned companies compared to the consolidated financial list for 2021. We found one, two, three, four companies on there, ladies and gentlemen. I don't want to waste your time with that. I took the list of 13 subsidiaries, and this is where I believe that the, that the Lexmark toner is going to run out in all the machines in America. If you look here, it says Zuhao Pantom Electronics is on the list, right? We have Nine Star Corporation, Zuhao Branch, Lexmark Consumable Business Unit. We all know that Lexmark Consumable Business Unit would be the toner for the Lexmark printers. So according to this, I mean, and this is why Lexmark has got to do some kind of public announcement because the whole world is going to assume that they're going to run out of toner in their machines. Zuhao Nine Star Information Technology Group. Ladies and gentlemen, let me show you this a little bit better way. I did a thing where I took right off their website the group organizational chart. Let me just walk you through this. Nine Star Corporation, eight of its Zuhao subsidiaries. We got Pantom Printers banned. We got G&G &G that's obviously banned because it says Zuhao G&G &G Digital Technology Company. It says Zuhao Pantom Electronic Company is on the ban list. Well, that would be Pantom Printers and that would be G&G &G Printers, right? Are any of these printers also made at the Lexmark factory? Is there any correlation with Lexmark and Pantom and Lexmark and G&G? &G? Folks, really gets confusing. Consumables, is Static Control going to be in business? Because they also ban the Apex chips, right? I mean, they're, they're banning GE. Those are the chip people. So even if the Lexmark consumables are on the list, are the chips that go on the toner bottles on the list? You see why it's so important for Lexmark to get out in front of this and actually have a real press conference and talk about real issues instead of nonsense and try to teach your sales reps and try to teach dealers how to bypass what's really going on. Say this, talk about this, show them this link. Look over here, look over here. Don't look at the fact that we've been banned by the Department of Homeland Security. Ladies and gentlemen, real quick, follow the math, follow the money. Lexmark's revenue for 2022 was $3.7 2.7 $2 billion of that came from Lexmark. Do you honestly believe that Nine Star bought Lexmark, which represents over 80% of their revenue, and then they told Lexmark, hey, Lexmark, we want to be one of your suppliers. If you want to call up Kia Sierra and say, Kia Sierra, would you make engines for us? Because we think we can get them cheaper from you than we could get them from Nine Star. Would you do that? You see how silly and stupid that sounds? But yeah, that's what, that's what Lexmark wants us to believe. That's what they want us to believe. They want us to believe that Nine Stars is one of their suppliers. 
I mean, I, I'm sure the folks over there at Lexmark, they're going to call my friend Pollock and Pollock. Hey, Chris, uh, we, we need some toner from you. We believe that the place you're getting the toner from, we could get cheaper than we could get it from Nine Star. Can you help us out with that? Uh, uh, well, Chris, while we got you on the phone, um, is there any chips that you can get us for the bottles of toner? Because, you know, <laughs> the chips we're getting from Nine Star, they just cost so much money. We really try to lower our cost. You see how ridiculous and stupid this sounds? But that's exactly what Lexmark wants you to believe. Lexmark, there they are. There's their factory. There's their building right there in Zuhau. Google the address. Ladies and gentlemen, I pulled this thing in white off of an article out of the Recycler magazine. Way back in November of 2019, Lexmark Consumables production has been transferred to Zuha production in the first half of 2019 in terms of printer hardware. The Lexmark printer production line has been established at Zuhau. Consumables? And printer production is in Zuo. I wanted to look at the G and G laser printer and compare it to the Lexmark printer, folks. When I say the Lexmark printer, I'm talking about the Go Line, the little Lexmark printers, the Go Line. We all know the Go Line, right? What do they advertise? Well, Lexmark they advertise that steel frame. G and G they advertise that steel frame. You would almost think these were the same printers made in the same factory, and someone just changed the label. Now, of course, you know, according to Lexmark. They use their own suppliers, and, and Nine Star is just one of those suppliers. So I'm sure they call up their own steel companies. Hey, you know, you know, Nine Star, they're making this G and G printer, and they're using this steel, and we think we can get the steel from you better, and we want to put the, the your steel in our Go Line printer. Will you help us with that, ladies and gentlemen? It's so absurd you can't even say it without laughing. We just see Rico and Toshiba coming together to do what? To consolidate manufacturing because it makes sense, especially in a marketplace that's declining. It makes sense. Share the resources, share the synergies. Do you realize that if Nine Star was not a communist controlled company, if Nine Star was a Japanese OEM, do you honestly believe for one second that we would be having a conversation about how this printer's made over here and this printer's made over here and they have nothing to do with each other? I had a pause. Because you would say, well, no, they would be made in the same place. <laughs> but because this is the Chinese Communist Party-owned company, we're, we're going to convince the whole world that we're not doing in the same place. It's just absurd. Lexmark, you need to really have some proof on that. And, and I'm telling you. Here's the reality. Here's a toner cartridge. Look at all the components. There's all kinds of components in a toner cartridge. Which components are made with the slave labor, being accused of made with slave labor? Just because it's being put together somewhere, maybe in Mexico, what part of the supply chain of the cartridge is, is in question? Just because they have some subsidiary that changes the name from one day to the next? Death by association. I want to share this, ladies and gentlemen, just to give you something to think about over the weekend. But we also know that Lexmark has the Optra IoT, Internet of Things software. Remember the balloon? Remember the satire I did? I want you all to think about the question I'm going to ask. Maybe Lexmark can answer it in their press release. Which subsidiary is going to control Optra? I'll just leave it at that. Now I want to share the last page of the slide. One-stop printing solution provider, Nine Star, has aspirations to be the world's largest manufacturer of printer and consumables. That's why they're doing all this. That's why they bought all these companies. Let me just read one thing here, ladies and gentlemen, and we'll wrap it up. Founded in 2000, Nine Star Corporation has been focusing on the printing and imaging industry for over 20 years as one of the top 500 listed companies in China. It has now become the world's fourth largest printer manufacturer with a market cap of more than 70 billion RMB and 20 billion RMB in revenue. Nine Star has been on the list of the Shizhen Stock Exchange since 2014. I want you to, I'm going to read this last paragraph. If you fall asleep, wake up because this is important. Nine Star has achieved full coverage of printing industry chain. Nine Star has achieved full coverage of printing industry chain and runs its business in more than 150 countries and regions around the world with a series of well-known brands across a variety of industry segments, including Lexmark, Pantom, Apex, G&G, &G, and Static Control. Nine Star has more than 23,000 employees worldwide, which 20% are R&D staffs. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to ask you one last time. Do you honestly believe that Nine Star bought Lexmark so they would allow Lexmark then to go out and source from other suppliers? Do you really believe this? Lexmark, please do a press release. Please stand in the front lawn of Lexting and tell the world 
tell the world why they're not going to run out of toner, because apparently, if you look at the list of the banned entities to coming into the United States, you could tie it to the consumables. If I'm wrong, you better clarify it really quick, because I'm not the only one thinking that. Ladies and gentlemen, I might do a weekend update, you never know. But until then, remember this, status quo is the killer of all that'll be invented. Don't get stuck in status quo, and I'll see you later.